since we're talking about January 6th, I do want to um, take you back to that day. Take a look at the video over here. Um, that, of course, was the news hanging outside the Capitol that day, and rioters were calling for your execution, uh, chanting, hang Mike Pence. Almost two years later, is it still tough to... There's some of the video of the hang Mike Pence. Uh, two years later, is it still tough to see that and hear that? Jake, it, it saddens me. But that day, it angered me. I must tell you, when... Uh, when the Secret Service took us down to the loading dock, accompanied by my wife and my daughter Charlotte and our Secret Service detail, I was determined to stay at my post. I told the Secret Service that I was not leaving the Capitol. I didn't want to give those people the sight of a 16-car motorcade speeding away from the Capitol that day. But frankly, when I saw those images and when, when I read a tweet that President Trump issued, saying that I lack courage in that moment. It angered me greatly. But to be honest with you, I didn't have time for it. The president had decided in that moment to be a part of the problem. I decided and was determined to be part of the solution. And so we essentially set that aside. I, I collected the Republican and Democrat leadership of the House and Senate on a conference call, and we began to work the problem. They tasked me to reach out uh, to leadership at the Pentagon, to leadership at the Justice Department, to surge additional resources there. And uh, thanks to the courage of those amazing Capitol Hill police officers and federal law enforcement, we, we quelled the violence. We reconvened the Congress the very same day. Uh, and I'll always believe that uh, because of their courage and valor, a day of tragedy became a triumph of freedom. We demonstrated to the American people and to the world the strength of our institutions, the resilience of our democracy. Uh, but uh, those memories, those images will always be with me. So you just said that the president in that moment decided to be part of the problem. And I have to say, as somebody that had been reporting on it for the months leading up to January 6th, I don't think anything happened in that moment that was part of the problem. President Trump had been campaigning uh, in favor of the overturning of the election for months and months and months. It wasn't in that moment, and he wasn't part of the problem. He, he was the problem. Well, look, uh, the, the people that rioted at the Capitol are responsible for what they did. And as I said that day, and I've believed every day since, uh, those people should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. When I saw the images of, of people smashing windows, ransacking offices, and creating the mayhem that ultimately cost lives, uh, I was filled with a simmering indignation. I'd served in the Congress for 12 years. I dreamed from the time I was a little boy, as I wrote in my book, about someday representing my hometown in Congress and to see what was happening there. The first time since 1814 at our Capitol building. I, I just found myself thinking, not this, not here, not in America. And I, I, I hear you loud and clear. Look, there, in the weeks after the election, I had, uh, I had told the president that after all the legal challenges would play out, which the campaign had every right to bring. Sure. I mean, there were, Jake, voting irregularities in a number of states where election laws had been changed by either executive action or by the courts. There was never evidence of widespread fraud. I don't believe fraud changed the outcome of the election, but um, the president and the campaign had every right to have those examined in court. But I told the president that uh, once those legal challenges played out, he should simply accept the outcome of the election and move on. Uh, but he was hearing different voices. And frankly, there were, there were some legal experts that, uh, that were allowed on the White House grounds that, uh, that should have never been let through the gate. Yeah, you're talking about Sidney Powell and Rudy Giuliani. I want to come back to that in a second, but I do want to show um, this moment because it was so important and so heartbreaking. This is um, inside the Capitol. This is video of the Secret Service trying to get you and your wife, Karen, and your daughter, Charlotte, to safety. As rioters came within 40 feet of you, we found out later, your family's lives were at risk. Not just yours, 
although that would be tragic, but your wife's and your daughter's, and I was worried for you that day, sir, covering this. I was worried for your wife, I was worried for your daughter. I'm relieved that nobody was harmed. You, if I were you, I would still be livid with Donald Trump. I would be so furious. And I know you're a measured man, um, but are you still angry? Well, I must tell you, the president's words and tweet that day were reckless. They endangered my family and, and all the people at the Capitol. And I was angry. But you know, my Christian faith tells me to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. And in the Christian faith, forgiveness is not optional. We literally pray in the Lord's Prayer to forgive those who trespass against us. And in the days that followed, when the president asked to meet with me after he'd made the right statements to the country, he'd committed to a peaceful transfer of power, he'd condemned the people that rioted at the Capitol. Um, we met and we sat down. And I prayed, I prayed for God's grace to meet that moment and that spirit. And uh, it wasn't easy. And, uh, and to be honest with you, I'm, I'm as human as the next guy. And I, I still pray for the president. And I pray for the grace uh, to forgive him and all those responsible for that tragic day. Uh, but uh, I, I truly do believe that we live in a time when the American people ought to be searching our hearts and having more grace toward one another. I mean, it's, it seems like our country is more divided now than ever before. I, even broadcast networks seem to be perceived to be divided along partisan lines, which is why I'm grateful for the opportunity to be on CNN today. I, I just think if, if, if all of us can be more forgiving uh, to one another, we'll, we'll have unity in this country more than we've had in recent years. And, and uh, with that unity, we'll meet the challenges that America faces in the balance of this new century.